Oh, I am loving, loving this series, comparing notes with you all and hearing different perspectives. Very brave to speak in, in favor of sloth. Very. <laughs> but you did it well. The pair that we came up with for this, this Sunday for sloth was to be paired with joy. And I want to read from you from uh, the first letter that Peter wrote. This is 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to pick it up in verse 8. Although you have not seen him, meaning Christ, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice. And here's the praise. With an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. When I was growing up, you know, my parents were in ministry and my dad is a pastor of a free Methodist church. We were concerned a lot about the state of our own spiritual life and our own soul. And as a kid, one of the things I remember, and, and it's always stuck with me, is this phrase, Joy inexpressible and full of glory. I just, I loved that phrase. And one of the things that's been a real challenge for me as I have matured and developed and life has changed and struggles have come and challenges of various kinds is to really wrestle with what it means to be a person who has joy. And I've spent a lot of time interviewing other people about this, reading different perspectives on it. And I have come to embrace sort of this little nugget that helps me out a lot. And I'm just going to give it to you today and just see if it helps you out. I have discovered that not just in different Christian traditions, but in different religious traditions and in non-religious perspectives, that one of the healthiest things to sort of wrap your mind around is that joy isn't happiness because happiness can be external and it can be situational and it can be circumstantial and i want you to know i hope you are happy i really do i want you to be happy i want everyone in our neighborhood to be happy I wish the whole city of Portland was happy. I really do. That in their circumstance, in their situation, in their external being, that they could respond with happiness. Just want to say, for the record, that's not joy. Joy comes from a different place. Joy doesn't come from outside. Joy wells up from inside. Joy is a spring, like a, a water spring, buried deep down in all of us. And for some of us, because of our, maybe our temperament or our personality, maybe our upbringing, maybe our social conditioning and how we relate to the world, layers may be put on top of that that keep it sort of under the surface. But people in all sorts of circumstances, all over the world, all through history, have found that joy has the ability to bubble up in the darndest ways. And when joy finds its way through the layers of our lives, the dirt and the rocks and the debris, right, and joy bubbles up, it actually takes on different flavors, you know, like mineral water, like, like living springs. And so I just want to invite you today to just sit for a second and distinguish between the things that make you happy. And I hope you do have things that make you happy. I want everyone to be happy. But as people of faith, I think there's a second question we need to ask ourselves, which is, where is your joy? Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to sit with it. What makes you happy is question one, and then set that aside. Where is your joy? Where does your joy come from? Let's sit together. So I don't know how you answered the questions that I asked, but I just want to give you a little bit of a permission this week or an invitation. What makes you happy? 
you set that aside. Where is your joy? If you had an answer to that, and I hope you did, I want to invite you, invest in that this week because joy has to be cultivated. So if you had an answer, I invite you to press into it. If you didn't have an answer, I want you to sit with that until you do. To cultivate and say, where does my joy come from? Because happiness comes and goes, right? Joy, happiness, I think of like a bird bath. Like it rains a little bit, fills up, sun comes up, dries up, right? That's happiness. Joy is a well that lives deep down and bubbles up through the circumstances of our life. So if you have joy, invest in it, press into it this week, let it well up. And if you didn't, weren't able to name it, I want to invite you to be really uncomfortable with that until joy comes to you. That's my prayer for you this week. I'm going to...